Do you ever find yourself having to deal with someone with an axe to grind? This rather aggressive phrase refers to someone who is out for revenge or is seeking to get back at someone for personal reasons. They have an axe to grind. We can also use this expression to describe a person who wishes to express an opinion against someone with whom they have had a disagreement. The person doing the criticising has an axe to grind. They wish to vent their personal anger at someone over an issue. That person has an axe to grind. The expression derives from the action of sharpening an axe before using it. Of course, the expression is purely figurative, so no one will actually be chopped up. Thank goodness. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, here we go again. Oh my goodness, it's Sunday. Hello, my pretties. Don't be afraid. There is nothing to fear. Mr. Duncan is here on YouTube right now. Hi, everybody. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? are you happy i really really hope so don't be scared don't be afraid everything is all right it is sunday and we are doing something a little different today because we are leading up to halloween in two days time it will be halloween and of course many people like to celebrate halloween by knocking on people's doors and saying trick or treat we will be talking a little bit more about that later on lots of things to discuss today because besides halloween we also have something else happening today we are leading up to the anniversary of my youtube channel being formed so we are leading up to the 11th anniversary of my youtube channel yes you didn't hear me wrong you did hear me right i have been here on youtube teaching english to the world for almost 11 years so on tuesday 
besides Halloween it will also be the anniversary of my English lessons starting many many years ago more about that later on also something else very different today joining me on the other side of the studio don't be afraid don't worry although you might want to cover your children's eyes because what you are about to see is so scary here it is oh my gosh it's horrible mr steve i thought you were going to wear some halloween makeup today but but i can see you've just come looking normal today so so why haven't you bothered <laughs> funny mr duncan funny <laughs> don't look at me i'm hideous okay so there's some amazing acting there from mr steve so there is mr steve <laughs> hello mr steve i can see that you have got into the spirit of things do you like that that's a joke by the way mr steve has got into the spirit of things the first bad joke of today trust me there will be many more <laughs> so it's sunday and lots of different things happening today besides the fact that we look very strange well maybe not not much stranger than normal we also have mr steve joining us for the whole two hours today can you believe it well i didn't want to waste this makeup on just one hour <laughs> so so mr steve now can you tell me what what's happened to you there you look as if you've been uh, in a road traffic accident oh i just woke up like this this morning I, I didn't feel very well when i went to bed last night and and i just woke up i, I thought i don't feel very well I, I went to the mirror and i've got all these scars and these open wounds and i had to hold my lip together with a with a safety pin it, it was just hideous but i i knew i had to get here to this studio to be on your show so i didn't have time to put much makeup on to cover it all up so i'm afraid i just woke up like this something must have got to me in the night uh, that that is the worst case of getting out of bed on the wrong side that i've ever seen to be honest did have a few to drink last night i, I can't remember what happened <laughs> but this is the result that's the story of, of most people's lives what did i do last night where am i <laughs> well if you're wondering where you are at the moment you are on youtube and it's myself mr duncan and also mr steve there he is thank you mr steve <laughs> better late than never so here we are it's sunday afternoon for those who are wondering what the heck is going on yes. uh, don't worry don't panic because it is halloween in two days time so that is the reason why everything looks a little bit different a little bit creepy i hope it's not too scary now if there are any children watching i hope this isn't too scary i hope i haven't scared them too much what a busy week it's been more of mr steve in a moment by the way what a busy week it's been well first of all this morning shall we have a look outside the window this is what it looked like this morning when i woke up there it is the view from my bedroom window this morning looking very lovely today the sky is blue having said that it's very cold at the moment it really does feel as if winter is on the way so very very cold at the moment quite chilly especially at night i have a feeling that next week we will be lighting the fire in the house because it's getting very very cold at night and mr steve there is something else that's happening now just to show how how famous i've become now because in the past i always said that i'm not famous but apparently just to show you how famous i have become here in much wenlock they have actually started a special tour this is called the mr duncan tour so now lots of people walk to the back of my garden and they they look at where mr duncan lives by the way mr duncan is me <laughs> And here it is look there it is can you see it mr duncan's tour so lots of people walk 
around the back of my house and there is a guide that shows them all of the places where I have filmed my lessons in the past and there you can see the guide he is pointing towards my house he's saying over there you can see Mr Duncan's house and that is where he produces his famous English lessons and you can see lots of people there they fly from all around the world to come and have a look at where the magic happens so that that was the first special Mr Duncan tour that took place this week and if you would like to join the Mr Duncan tour apparently it takes place every Monday every Monday morning at 8 30 a.m. and the Mr Duncan tour will be running until I think it's February next year so all of these people are coming to have a look at where my English lessons are made so as you can see we are really famous what do you think about that Mr Steve we're famous now well I think we'll have to start charging uh, maybe a hundred pounds hundred dollars for them to go through the gate at the top and have a have a look yes at, because, uh, what because goes on there is a gate at the back of my house and people have to walk through it so I'm thinking of charging people so so now that there is a big tourist industry taking off here in much Wenlock lots of people flying from around the world all the different countries people are arriving here they're coming here just to have a look where my English lessons are made it's incredible I mean there could be a thousand people there by Christmas standing at the top there with all their camera lenses pointed directly onto you yes. but you know what the worst thing is I don't make a penny from it well that's why I said we'll have to start charging them I'll so go up there somebody else is making a profit for, for, from my my name I'll, I, I, I think I'll go up there dressed like this and say look <laughs> Here, give some money to Mr. Duncan, otherwise you just get lost. Which is You've nothing new, money. Because, because Mr. Steve normally scares the locals. Isn't that true? Yes, because, yes, normally I've got lots of makeup on to cover all this up, but today, obviously, I didn't have time. In fact, so. isn't, it, isn't it true, Mr. Steve, that next Saturday, sorry, next Sunday, because next Sunday is Bonfire Night, the yes. 5th of November, is it true that next Sunday they're going to put you on the fire? Oh, as, gu as Guy Fawkes. That's not very nice. What do you think? I think that's not very nice of Mr. Duncan to say that to me, is it? That's what I've heard. Put me on the bonfire. Lots of things coming your way today. It's a special day. We are getting ready for Halloween, as you can see. <laughs> this is not what we normally look like, just in case you are wondering. Um, and also, <laughs> we will be celebrating in the second hour, we will be celebrating my 11th year on youtube 11 can, years mr can, duncan can you believe it i can't believe it no it's in, it's quite a feat actually is there anybody else on youtube that has been teaching english or, or even doing anything for 11 years on youtube for uh, that matter I, i've never done anything for 11 years in my life be nice if uh, you got recognition from youtube as well i wonder if that will happen mr duncan no i can tell you now that, that youtube will completely ignore this just like last year because last year i had my 10th anniversary and youtube completely ignored they it. couldn't care less they couldn't give a damn it's a good job we've got wonderful people out there watching you now who appreciate what you do mr duncan well that's I all do, i can say i do appreciate my fans i must admit because because he i does. wouldn't be here if it wasn't for my viewers and of course now i'm talking about you watching out there if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be here now doing this wonderful loyal viewers we have the live chat up and running right now lots of people oh, on the live exciting. chat patricia is here hello patricia a big bonjour from france bonjour also jana jana hanafi is here i'm so happy to see you today hello from mexico abril is here hello abril welcome to my rather unusual live stream don't forget i am here every sunday every sunday from 2 p.m uk time and of course mr steve will also be here every single sunday lots of people seem to like it the, the the fact that you are here now mr steve 
Thank you very much. A little My bit, pleasure. A little bit later on, guess what we're doing later, Mr. Steve? Oh, tell me, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> That's some great acting, by the way. Tell, uh, I will tell you right now, a little bit later, we are going to take a look at Mr. Steve's first ever appearance in my YouTube lessons. The first time Mr. Steve ever appeared in one of my lessons. Can I you remember which lesson it was, Mr. Steve? I cannot remember. It's such a long time ago, but uh, I can't wait to see it. You can't wait to see it. Well, guess what? We're going to have a look at it right now. Now? So this is Mr. Steve's first ever appearance in one of my YouTube oh. lessons. And in this lesson, we have Mr. Steve joining in, pretending to be me. And also we have some rather funny bloopers as well. Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, hey, we're no, going no, to need no, no, no. Oh, d d d what's, what's going on? <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> this, this is my lesson. What, what are you doing? It, I was just thought I'd help you a bit. I don't need any help. Of your uh, lessons of no. the English no. pronunciation. No need. But thank you very Sorry. much. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Some 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 some, 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 some bits we didn't use. It's video. Oh, is it on? Fascinating. Yeah, it's on. Oh, <laughs> recording. <laughs> Shall we have a go then? Shall we try? Try what? Try uh, the uh, the bit. The the. We're going to I come in and pretend to be you. Yeah, you're going to pretend to be me. Oh can, right. Can you do that? Um. Can I borrow your glasses? Give it a, no, you can't borrow my glasses. I need them. That's it. Just do a run as if you're doing. <laughs> Hi everybody. This is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? Are you happy? <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you okay? Okay. Try again. Are you happy? I hope so. Oh, no, no. We've... Excuse me. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Did I hold your hand? <laughs> <laughs> La 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 The famous Mr. Duncan. No, I'm not famous. I've seen your, your videos. <laughs> I've seen them. They're wonderful. Mm. They help me speak English. Oh. Before I know speak English now. Good. <laughs> My English good. Okay, it's just a f it's just being offensive now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> We've passed the boundary of funny. Now we are into the uh, offensive realm. I'm, I'm getting out of the zen now. Hurry up. Hi everyone. This is Mr. Duncan in it's, England. It's, it's everybody. Hi, everybody. Just it then. I know, just hit the camera as well. Oh well, don't worry. Hi, what? Hi, everybody. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? <laughs> I hope so. Body language. That's <laughs> <laughs> a fact. Oh, Everyone! I want it to be right! It has to be right or I'll cry! Cry forever! Okay, just... Do this across your bare bottom! <laughs> Can't even afford a clapperboard! And uh, action! What, We're what going to do, 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 do,
I can't believe this, this guy's trying to be me. I can't believe it. Terrible. Anyway, I have to do my lesson now. Oh, right, okay. But I hope you don't mind, you know, we just... just okay. to be you. That's okay. Okay, I'll, I'll call the hospital, they can take you back. So there was Mr. Steve. Did you see him? Mr. Steve making his first ever appearance way back in 2008. <laughs> Did you see that then? Did you see the Mr. Duncan tour? Apparently they've come back. They want to see more of the back of my house. <laughs> so, Mr. Steve, do you remember now the lesson? It was the body language lesson. How long ago was that, Mr. Duncan? I just said 2008. 2008. All oh, right. <laughs> well, look what's happened to me in that short space of time since then, being involved with you and your english teaching lessons has turned me into this hideous zombie <laughs> i must admit I'm, i think it is an improvement though you do look better i must admit you've never looked better to be honest oh thank you <laughs> i feel so i must say i've got a wonderful set behind me shall we let uh, your viewers see this spectacular set that you've put together for me look at that and the big question today is which which part of the set is going to fall off first because i i, I spent three days doing this three days and I realized that that lots of the, the the pieces of paper that I stuck up they kept falling down so I have a feeling today that that some of this stuff is going to keep falling down and regular viewers of course will know that I'm always complaining about the boring backdrop to me <laughs> standing here which is usually just a load of tripods on a green screen well today look at this I shall reveal it in all its glory. So, what, what can you can you show us what is actually there? Right. Well, we've got uh, balloons in uh, various colours, black and red, to be a bit scary for Halloween. Uh, we've got the uh, familiar clock. We've got a skull. Uh, we've got look at these bats hanging up here. These scary-looking bats. I like the bats that's right of course we get them flying around here all the time we get but real we get real bats here don't we yes they might they might uh, they might come and drop in later if we leave the door open <laughs> so look at that trick or treat we've got a witch over here that's a witch uh we've got a frog where are you going <laughs> try, try to stay on camera <laughs> hello it's like it's like a bbc weatherman i've noticed nowadays on the bbc when when the weather person weather man or weather woman is is reading the weather they sort of disappear that's better I stand this side do it that way round a spider i've got a pointer now <laughs> a spider a frog associated with with witches and evil doings there's the witch on her broomstick yeah. <laughs> the witch on her broomstick yeah. <laughs> and then we've got trick or treat which is something i'm sure we will explain for people who don't know about halloween we'll get into that a bit later on uh, and as I already said, we've got these lovely balloons and a skull and yeah. these these lovely bats that are flying behind me. They might attack me, bite my neck at any minute. What are the other things? There, there are other things there as well that you've missed out. Have I? Have I missed things out? Uh, the spider's webs. Yes. The spider's webs. And the big orange things. The big orange thing. Ah, Mr. Duncan. Well, that, is, of course, is commonly used every year in halloween it's a pumpkin pumpkin it's a giant it's a pumpkin a huge great uh i don't know if it's a fruit i think it's a vegetable and it's cut out hollowed out and you put uh you put candles inside and and, and uh, cut out the shape of a of eyes and a nose light the candles and it looks scary because halloween is all about being scary it's about the afterlife <laughs> is, is this it not mr duncan <laughs> is, is halloween about the afterlife well I, I i it's it's sort of got its sort of roots in I, that I, I thought it was all about kids just being very annoying knocking on your door mm. and and trying to bribe you mm. out of giving them gi giving giving sweets to them yes but the the whole tradition of it <laughs> goes back hundreds of years 
uh, to the middle there. Is it time? Do we want to talk about the history of Halloween now? Is we it might as well. Oh, right. Well, we're here, aren't we? We're here. We're here. We might as well do it. We're dressed up. <laughs> we've gone to a lot of effort and mr duncan wasn't lying when he said it's taken him three days to put all this together it has he's been working very hard to make this look scary for halloween of course not everybody celebrates halloween it's more of a sort of a western sort of tradition america england but of course more countries in the world are doing it now um and from what i understand mr duncan i'm sure you've got a lot more knowledge about this than me that the history dates back hundreds and hundreds of years back to the dark middle ages uh, in the uk and it's all about it's all about uh, what this fascination that we all have human beings have of of what happens after we die mm. yes is there an afterlife and if so what goes on there and halloween is really about sort of saying prayers for the dead i think that's where it originally comes from that is it's it was actually a, a pagan ritual so this predates things like christianity being introduced to this country so it goes back many yes you're right hundreds of years mm. and over the years halloween has become something different so it, originally it was called all hallows eve which uh -huh. which which was the period of time leading up to all of the spirits and the ghosts walking around and over the years the the uh, celebration or the commemoration or the festival has changed and nowadays most people don't even think about the origins of halloween so nowadays we just think of pumpkins we think of children knocking on people's doors asking for sweets yes. and of course we think of the office party where everyone gets drunk they have course, halloween parties you see that's it basically exactly because it's been highly commercialized uh since the beginning of the 20th century mainly Has it? in america and uh, of course because obviously people are making money out of this now but it all dates back as well. You imagine what life was like six or seven hundred years ago. Everybody really lived in dark, dingy forests. Uh, there was no art, there was no really artificial light apart from dimly lit candles. So all these stories of ghosts and ghouls and zombies and what goes on in the afterlife uh, really became a, a very real and and a prominent thing in people's lives so every year they wanted to celebrate it really to say prayers uh, to people that had died so that they didn't come back and and haunt them in in, in the material world that we all live in what's what's uh, also interesting is it's very similar to the culture in china where where spirits and ghosts are, ah. are almost revered so there is a kind of spiritual sort of uh, belief also in china so it's very similar in fact um, but what's interesting now is most people don't sort of look at that aspect of it. They just look at the fun side, which is, That's of course, it. dressing up as scary monsters and knocking on doors, walking around the streets, dressed up as scary characters. And that's really it. Yes. So, um, uh, and a lot of people think that in Britain, Halloween isn't really observed but in fact originally this is where it all began this is where Halloween mm -hmm. was observed all of those hundreds of years ago and then of course in the United States it was adopted and also adapted there so many people think that Halloween is just a USA festival but it isn't it's also commemorated or observed here in the UK in a very similar way people dress up as scary characters and the most important thing of all people knock on the doors normally children sometimes adults because we're going out later aren't we mr Steve? are we we're going out trick-or-treating tonight that'll scare the neighbors that will give the neighbors quite a shock <laughs> seeing two adults standing at their door dressed as ghouls apparently i read as well mr duncan that uh, this uh, tradition now of trick-or-treating uh, dates back because apparently in the Middle Ages one of the celebrations was they used to give out sort of cake uh, as, as sort of offerings to the to dead people so that it's sort of that I think it dates back from there the trick-or-treat um, because we all do have a fascination about about 
life after death does it exist if so what is it so imagine living in a dark forest with wild wolves and all sorts of creatures that could kill you oh, at any minute living oh, out there because that, that's what life used to be like people were killed by by wolves and wild bears and all sorts of creatures roaming in the forests we've killed them all off now it's very safe so life's a lot safer so we don't fear the unknown as much anymore so uh, as you have quite rightly said halloween has now turned into this sort of sort of commercialized version where it's a little scary but not that scary and uh, and people make money out of out of selling sweets and the whole commercialization of the whole thing uh, but it's fun and we like to do it every year it's like bonfire night which we'll talk about next week i'm sure that's it let's let's not let's not do too much because we we're won't. going to be taking away next week's <laughs> episode next week's live stream of course next week we are live on november the 5th which happens to be bonfire night and also guy fawkes night so that's next week we won't talk about that because because there'll be no point you tuning in next week you see if we talk about all of that that'll be very exciting are we going to have fireworks mr duncan i'm not sure i'm not sure if we're, we're going to have fireworks well no more than normal anyway because there, there are normally fireworks going off here in the studio between you and i <laughs> i don't know what he means but never mind so lots of things coming today we have the uh, mystery idioms lots of people love the mystery idioms and of course today will be no exception we also have the live chat very busy lemon tree says duncan frankenstein yes i am actually duncan stein duncan stein so, duncan stein <laughs> that's funny there's <laughs> so i'm duncan stein and that over there is scary scary steve so he's got the scars and I've got the Frankenstein head. They've actually given me a new brain today, but I don't know where it came from. But it, it it's worse than the one I had before. Do you need a new brain, Mr. Duncan? I certainly do. I can do with a couple. <laughs> Talking of Halloween, I, I can safely say that I've never been grabbed by the goose ghosts. The ghosts have never grabbed me, although now and again I am grabbed by the ghoulies. <laughs> go into that. I've got some scary stories for later as well. Really? Mr. Yes. Steve will be giving us some scary spooky stories. Halloween tales. So please don't go away. Stay around. For that, as I said, we have the mystery idioms. Shall we have a look at the mystery idioms now, Mr. Steve? yes i would like i've never seen them actually happen live i've always been outside <laughs> waiting to come in you can now see how exciting things get around here sometimes it gets very hot i know that i'm very hot with this hoodie on so here we go the mystery idioms are coming all you have to do is say what you see mystery idiom number one coming right now so there it is that is the first mystery idiom but but what is it what is it we also have ashwak mm. and also shirin and rosa here rosa says congratulations for your 11th year thank you very much and here is the second mystery idiom so there it is so two mystery idioms there is the second one and there once again is the first one all you have to do is say what you see they are mystery idioms well-known phrases or expressions used in the english language hello mr steve says lemon tree cool costume oh that's oh. very nice of you to say thank you very much hello mr duncan can you please say hello to brazil hello brazil a big hello to brazil and also to diego as well isra is here sanjeev reddy is here hello sanjeev i believe it is your first time here today i'm new here this is so interesting thank you very much for that royal Husenil says hello mr duncan from azerbaijan thank you very much for joining me nikolai mr duncan and mr steve and everyone hello hello S rosa is here i think i've already said hello to rosa milanka hello milanka 
I'm not sure how many people from Serbia are here watching you, but I promise that I won't leave you. I will stay with you. Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to hear that you are going to stay with me. Luciano is here. Hello, Luciano. Say hello to Luciano, Mr. Steve. I like to call him Pavarotti. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you've done there because, yes. of course, th there are the three tenors. There's Luciano Pavarotti, yes. and there's uh, the other guy, Jose. Jose Carreras. Carreras. Apparently, Jose Carreras is is the one that no one can remember. So people always remember Luciano Pavarotti, and they always remember. Placido Domingo. Placebo Domingo. It sounds like a Placido type of. Placido Domingo. It sounds like a type of medicine. <laughs> Have you taken your place, pla, placebo Domingo today? <laughs> I think it's Placido. Placido <laughs> Placido. Domingo, I think is how oh, you would pronounce Not it. Not placebo. Not placebo. Placido placebo. Domingo. Placebo is a great word, isn't it? It is. What yes. is placebo? Placebo is something that you. Uh, you isn't the real thing. So, for example, if you're in a trial of uh, where they're testing a medicine, mm. then uh, you want to see if this medicine works. So you give half the people in the trial the real medicine and half the people get a fake medicine that looks like it's the real thing. Normally, it's just like sugar or something like or sugar in the capsule. Uh, neither side knows who's getting the real one. So that's a good way of trying to find out if that new drug actually works so that's a placebo it's it's sort of fake false it's not the real thing it's a very scientific way of finding out if if a certain medicine really does work tried so and trusted methods been used for many many years yes i think so and sometimes i mean there are people who believe that placebos are given out normally to people who are taking medicine so so there are people who who think that a lot of the pharmaceutical industries do that so I, i'm not sure how true that is well that is very true well i don't think that's true but i think a lot of doctors uh give out for example a very cheap simple medicine like aspirin or paracetamol they i just i just realized we, we have to be careful what we're saying here patricia hello patricia Patricia, you have some blood curdling on your face. I think so. This is where they put my new brain in. So now I have a new brain inside my skull. So, so yes, you can see it, it, it isn't healing very well. <laughs> I might have to put mm. some Savlon on it. I think yes, so. Yes. In fact, you went a bit. You went a bit mad with your new brain, and and uh, it hit me across the forehead with an axe. Hence, I've got this great big scar. Oh, it hurt a bit. I can tell you. Uh, hang on a second i think i know what's happened i think they've taken your brain out and have swapped it with mine so <laughs> Good i, I luck think with that i think maybe i've got your brain <laughs> you don't want that believe me which will explain a lot shall yes. we have a look at one of my english lessons from the past would you like to do that go on let's have a look mr duncan at one of your old english what's this what's this english lesson about it is all about the subject that we are talking about today it oh. is all it is all about not Halloween. You are near. Scary stories. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to introduce it now. <laughs> if you could let me introduce it, I'd be very. Uh, <laughs> it's it's all about. <laughs> it's all about. You're not you're not on mic, Mr. Steve. No one can hear you. With the. <laughs> I assumed I was always on mic. No. No one can see you. Let, let me just let me just introduce this next piece, please. OK, is that is that OK, Mr. Steve? Yes. <laughs> is that OK? I, I, I know that you like talking. I don't know when I'm on and when I'm not because I. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, I can assure you now that you are not on at the moment. OK. OK. <laughs> Here is a lesson all about the subject that we are talking about today. A lesson all about fear. Fear is an emotional reaction to something we are afraid of. We express fear in many ways. For instance, our heart might beat faster. Maybe we begin to bite our nails. 
Perhaps we shiver, or maybe we close our eyes so we cannot see what is happening. We can express fear by what we say and the way we say it. For example, I don't want to go in there. It's too dark. Someone is following me. Maybe they will rob me. I don't want to go to the dentist. I'm too scared. I have to see my boss today, and I'm not looking forward to it. Did you know that you can be afraid of almost anything? There is another word for fear. We can say that we have a phobia. If you have a phobia, then this means that you will always be afraid of that particular thing. There are many phobias around, such as agoraphobia. The fear of open spaces or going outdoors. Acrophobia, the fear of being high up from the ground. The dizzy feeling you get when you're high up is called vertigo. Algophobia, a fear of pain. Arachnophobia, to be afraid of spiders. Claustrophobia. A fear of being in a small space, for example, trapped in a cupboard. Hydrophobia, a fear of water. Pyrophobia, a fear of fire or being burned. Ranidophobia, a fear of frogs. Triskaidekaphobia, the fear of number thirteen. For example, sitting at a table with thirteen people. Trypanophobia, a fear of injections or needles. Xenophobia, a fear of strangers, foreigners, or foreign cultures. What are you afraid of? What makes you scared? Boo! If fear suddenly happens, then we normally call this shock. You did not expect that event to happen, so you will be even more scared and anxious. There are many sentences that can be used for showing the action of being shocked. For example, you frightened the life out of me. I'm shaking like a jelly. You put the willies up me. I almost jumped out of my skin. You nearly gave me a heart attack. Sometimes at night we have dreams that make us afraid. We call these particular dreams nightmares. Or bad dreams. In our mind, the scary event seems real, so our fear will feel just as real. Do you ever have nightmares? <clears throat> are you as Are you afraid? Are you scared? <laughs> I I hope not. <laughs> so there it was one of my lessons that I've made over the past 11 years and that one was all about fear what are you afraid of what scares you what are you afraid of for example maybe you are afraid of spiders or perhaps you are afraid of ghosts or maybe certain movies which is interesting because there are lots of scary movies around. Mr. Steve is still here. Mr. Steve is with us for the whole of today's live stream. Very unusual because normally Mr. Steve is only here for the second hour, but he's with us all through today. So 
what scares you anything that scares you in particular i must admit i i, I am afraid of the dark i don't like the dark i don't like being in a dark room or i don't like walking around at night without a torch so i must admit i, I do i do fear the dark a little bit i don't like darkness that all stems from when i was a kid steve oh does it am i back on <laughs> uh, mr steve is now back on and it's we are good to know we are together today and yes I, I was afraid of the dark as a kid i used to scream and shout and have nightmares so so i always used to have a little light on in in the bedroom when i was a child in oh. fact i still do <laughs> i still do so what scares you out there is there something you are afraid of maybe you are afraid of our appearance today <laughs> we do look a little bit scary don't we yes i think we do i think we do mr duncan but, but then again i think we always look a little bit scary to be honest oh surely not surely we're friendly and approachable and engaging there are lots uh, there are lots of before you go off on another <laughs> 20 minute speech <laughs> <laughs> there this are is lots what you of get <laughs> there are lots of scary movies around <laughs> there are lots of frightening movies now is there a particular movie that scares you mr steve actually i don't like st uh, i don't like stories about devils uh really? like the omen was a a, a a sort of famous film from the 1980s i don't like films about sort of devils and things like oh, that oh yes that, the uh, the omen that was all about that little boy who apparently was really the devil oh dear me yeah that was a bit scary there's always that scene at towards the end where, where the boy is trapped under the ice i hate that that's yes. so that's so scary i don't it's, like i don't like sort of uh places like lofts in a house lofts or <laughs> you cellars. don't like attics attics <laughs> attics or, or lofts you can call them lofts i must admit I, i'm getting used to my appearance i think i might dress like this every week i think it's an improvement <laughs> to be honest <laughs> and you as look we, amazing by the way we can join some kind of cult sorry and some kind of cult what's that sorry i, I can't what, what did you say a c u l t a cult that sounds worse yes. I, oh a cult a lot yes. of people say that I'm a cult. A small they say that, that Mr. Duncan, that Mr. Duncan, what a cult. Well, maybe maybe you've got a cult following, Mr. I, Duncan. I think that's what they're saying anyway. I think <laughs> yes, a small group of people involved in, in something that they all like and do together. I Ooh. believe, Mr. Steve, you have a horror story for us now. <laughs> a scary story. Do you? <laughs> Are you okay? Shall I call a doctor? It's getting into the spirit of it all. Are you the having one? Of, are you having one of your funny turns again? I nearly said the spirit of it all. Get it? But you've already you've already cracked that joke already. Yes, we have. So you have a story now that is going to put the willies uppers. A scary story just for Halloween. Okay. So this story is called the chair this short tale starts benignly enough with a friendly seeming ghost playing with children but when you learn the origins of the ghost and just why the ghost is moving the object around the room it quickly gets a lot creepier i shall begin when my sister Betsy and I were kids, our family lived for a while in a charming old farmhouse. We loved exploring its dusty corners and climbing the apple tree in the backyard. But our favourite thing was the ghost. We called her Mother because she seemed so kind and nurturing. Some mornings, Betsy and I would wake up and on each of our nightstands, we'd find a cup that hadn't been there the night before. Mother had left them there, worried that we'd get thirsty during the night. She just wanted to take care of us. 
Among the home's original furnishings was an antique wooden chair, which we kept against the back wall of the living room. Whenever we were preoccupied watching TV or playing a game, Mother, that's the ghost, would inch that chair forward across the room towards us. Sometimes she managed to move it all the way to the centre of the room. We always felt sad putting it back against the wall. Mother just wanted to be near us. Years later, after we'd moved out, I found an old newspaper article about the farmhouse's original occupant, a widow. She'd murdered her two children by giving them each a cup of poisoned milk before bed. Then she hung herself. The article included a photo of the farmhouse's living room with a woman's body hanging from a beam. Beneath her, knocked over, was that old wooden chair placed exactly in the centre of the room. Did it get colder in here, or is it just me? <laughs> That's the first scary story. Oh, I've got goosebumps all over. I've got goosebumps in places where I never knew that I could get goosebumps. That was amazing. That was very scary. So basically, mother was a ghost. Mother was a ghost. And she had... What had she done? She had She'd murdered her children by poisoning them. With milk? With milk. What, what was the milk off? <laughs> was it sour milk? Well, I'm not sure what it was, but it's a scary story. I don't think we need to look into too many details look, of the I've story. It's just a scary story, Mr. Duncan. I've got goosebumps. Do you know what goosebumps are? Goosebumps are the things that appear when you get cold or afraid. All of the hairs stand up and you get little bumps on your skin. We call them goose bumps. Goosebumps. Or, or of course, goose pimples. <laughs> I don't know why. So you you really did frighten me there, Mr. Steve. I was very scared indeed. Uh, do you have another story for us later? I do. I've got two, but if we've only got time for one, we'll just do one more scary story. We will try to squeeze that in when we can. We have something else now coming. Well, first of all, let's have a look at the live chat because lots of people are getting involved today on the live chat. Brilliant. Ishan says, I'm not afraid. Um, I, I'm afraid. Oh, yes. <laughs> Duncan, something's just fallen off. The first part of the set has fallen off. Can you can you find it, Mr. Stephen? Show us. So the first part, the first thing that's fallen off the set, there it is. So there is the first thing to fall off. It must have been a ghost that did that, Mr. Duncan. I it think It must so. have been a ghost. Maybe. Shall I stick it back up for you? <laughs> you, you could try, but, but I, th I think it will just fall back down again. It's too high now. Lower. No, it's too high. Lower. Lower. That's it. That's OK. I think it will fall off again stay <laughs> yeah did you see that very spooky i think that was a ghost that was scary that was a ghost and we didn't arrange that at all did we Mr. we Duncan? did not arrange that yeah. although my my workmanship the, the the way in which i put those pieces of paper up probably leave a lot to be desired this to is be like honest. theresa may's speech at yes. the conservative party conference when everything started falling off yes some people say i look a little bit like theresa may today scary you mean ashen with <laughs> with dark bags under your eyes and a yes. white face <laughs> that's not very nice <laughs> i i hope theresa may isn't watching i'm sorry if you are she's under a lot of stress mr steve is only half true patricia i'm scared of poisonous snakes Ooh. oh yes. yes you know the, those snakes you have to be very careful where where you where you find those snakes they can they can bite you they can give you a nasty bite if you're not careful eliana is here long the due and i don't um oh that that's a message for someone else on the live chat uh, that's i'm not going to read that out that was fantastic mr duncan 
Uh, sorry, Mr. Steve, Eugene is on the live chat. It's moving very fast today. All of the chat is moving very quickly. Eugene says that was a fantastic performance, Mr. Steve. Thank you very much. And more of that to come later. Matt Wallou says that was a great performance as well. Oh, you, you've you. got some fans out there, Mr. Steve. Wow. It's all about F scaring everybody. Francesco is here. Lesson. Francesco says hello as well. Hello. Lemon Tree says, wow, amazing acting skills. Thank you. Do you Thank mean you. me or Mr. Steve or Mr. St <laughs> Are you on about Mr. Of Steve? Of course. I think so. Very scary says Saka. Saka. Afridi or Afraidi. I thought it was Afraidi, you see. <laughs> Eliano, I have been. Oh, th there is a there is a huge conversation taking place in the live chat, and I, I keep reading parts of it. But it, but if I read a part of it, it won't make any sense to anyone else. <laughs> Apparently, Sergio is afraid of injections, mm -hmm. and also needles going into his skin. Oh dear! Yes, oh. a lot of people don't like injections yes. or having blood taken from them blood Ugh, not very nice at all no. we will be celebrating something very special in the second hour because it will be my 11th year on youtube my 11th anniversary guess when on tuesday tuesday the 31st of october i will have been here on youtube for 11 years so we are about to enter into our 12th year on youtube can you believe it mr steve i i can't believe it no it, it, it it's just sort of gone by very quickly and you've done an awful lot in that time we'll talk about more of that we'll talk more about that in the in the final hour how many how many videos you produced i wonder how many hours of recorded english teaching you've actually contributed yes uh, to the the world of english out there or even more interesting how many hours i've spent making all of those videos because of course producing these videos and produ even producing this today has taken many many days of preparation so we'll talk about that a little bit later on apparently emilio says with your new brain you can teach english much better thank you emilio for your vote of support <laughs> to she being sarcastic <laughs> to win t says can you explain the words magic and magical well magic is something that happens or occurs that has no explanation it seems too incredible so something that's magic is something that happens or occurs miraculously it's magic and something that is magical is amazing or fantastic something that is very impressive is magical some people say that disneyland is a magical place to go it is an amazing place so i hope that answers your question damia says i am afraid of snakes and scorpions oh yes yeah, scorpions aren't very nice we don't we don't like scorpions very yeah. much no because they can sting you sting you with their with their little tail their tail looks like that you see tias says maybe the ghost is joining in with your live video yes, yes. i think so did you see that yeah. earlier a, a part of the set fell to the floor oh, something dropped off something dropped off there's nothing worse than when something drops off do you agree mr steve no you want to keep everything in place you don't everything has to stay off. where it is of course you if you're a zombie <laughs> like i am today things drop off like your fingers might drop off or, or, or bits of your skin might come off or your eye might fall off Ew, fall what off might what zombie being a zombie is all about francesco says mr duncan looks like frankenstein he is frankenstein i am not frankenstein correct. i am duncanstein duncanstein 
Of course, everybody gets that wrong, including myself. Frankenstein, of course, wasn't the monster. Frankenstein was the uh, was the mad scientist that created Frankenstein. Yes, uh, thank you. The yes, monster. you see. <laughs> yes, a lot of people make that mistake, including me. Just so a lot of people say Frankenstein as the monster, but of course, Frankenstein wasn't the monster. Frankenstein was the scientist who created yes. the monster. So a lot of people say that, but I am, for argument's sake, I am Duncan Stein. And that over there, that is scary, scary Mr. Steve, looking very sinister and spooky today. Because, of course, two days from now, it will be Halloween. Halloween. Simona says, I am afraid of bugs and gypsies. It's a very Jesus. interesting combination, a very strange combination. Indeed. Yes, because, yes, yeah, I can, I can understand why. Because, Continue. Well, quite often gypsies are sort of steeped in a lot of folklore and they're sort of more in touch with, with the past and the, the ancient sort of traditions that used to go on many hundreds of years ago. And uh, I remember when I was young, uh, my mother always said to me, because gypsies used to try and sell you pegs for for hanging your washing up on the washing line. That's pegs. very spooky. Those 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 spooky pegs. That well, no, the spooky thing was oh. if a gypsy came to your house and uh, said, "Do you want to buy any pegs? Do you want to buy any pegs?" That's what <laughs> that's how they used to say it. And, and if you said no they would put a curse on you oh i see yeah so it's that's a bit why i, I tell you now wait there it's a bit like trick or treat yes yes there you go so uh i don't think they do it now i haven't i haven't had we haven't had any gypsies coming around knocking on our door for years but they used to do that when i grew up and that was you know in the 1980s i think the, i think the last time that a gypsy knocked on my door was in about 1986 yes so not for a while but they used to sell pegs so they were a bit scary because they, they look scary and they used to threaten you with with a curse i really if hope there are no gypsies what i i hope there are no gypsies watching today no, but i don't think they do that anymore oh okay good i'm glad to hear that i haven't uh, but um that's just tradition luciano says gypsies really love to curse people yes exactly so so th yes. that's that's two against one okay so Habe so Habe says duncan stein oh i'm scared happy halloween thank you very much for that in a few moments we are going to change out of these costumes hopefully <laughs> we're going to do it very quickly and you will be watching one of my i think it's one of my full english lessons whilst we clean ourselves up patricia says mr steve you look like the grim reaper oh yes yes i should have a, a big uh, uh what does the go on reaper have I it is called a scythe a scythe that's it a great big scythe a big scythe normally oh, you okay. use it for cutting the shop off your head cutting the wheat but uh, the the he is like the personification of death isn't he exactly yes and that that's all tied up in halloween uh and uh, the, the 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 fear of what happens in the afterlife yes yeah, you you seem to like saying that you've said that about 50 times today That's yes fascinating you seem to be fascinated by by the fascination the fascination for the afterlife seems to fascinate you if you believe in that sort of thing i'm not I saying whether i do or not but uh, bahad has left a message saying i see that the subtitles are not enabled we can't have subtitles because you're watching us live this ah. is this is live okay i'm sorry there are no subtitles for the live stream it's impossible it's physically impossible because we don't know what we are going to say next so there are no subtitles for the live stream we are live look look six what what, what are you pointing at the clock oh i see there it is it is now six minutes past three o'clock uk you time and of course we're slightly an hour later because our clocks changed didn't they uh 
uh, last night, Mr. Duncan, as that's, they do. That's it. Uh, we we actually turned the clock back turn last the clock night. Back, back one we, hour. That's I, not just us here in in uh, Mr. Duncan's house. No, that's the whole of. Uh, well, I don't know. If this the whole of the UK. It's certainly uh, England. No, it's the whole Scotland of the UK. The many the many UK. parts of Europe do as well. In fact, some parts of the world also observe the summertime and the winter time so they change their clocks as well so okay. some countries do it and some countries don't do it and that's the reason why it is so confusing every year we have this confusion over this this change in the time so so between you and me i hate it i think it's a stupid idea well, i think we should stop it when it, when it comes to march the clocks will go forward again <laughs> boom boom says Mr. Duncanstein, you give me the creeps. That's true. A lot of people say that, even when I'm not dressed like this. I reckon that this is Mr. Steve's normal appearance. Yes, you're right. It yeah. is. It, it is. is. You're it right. Is. I normally put makeup on. This is what Mr. Steve looks like normally. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a look at one of our full English lessons and we will go away to clean ourselves up. No more scary stories. No. Oh, shall we have a scary story? One more scary story and then we will start celebrating our 11th year on YouTube. OK, Mr. Steve, right. I can see that you want to tell us another scary story. This is a quick one. It's called The Accident. It was 1 a.m. and Guy Halverson sat in his dark living room. He hadn't moved for over an hour. The accident earlier that evening kept playing over and over in his mind. The light turned red, but he was in a hurry and accelerated. An orange blur came from his right, and in a split second there was a violent jolt. Then the bicyclist rolled across his hood or bonnet and fell out of sight on the pavement. Horns blared angrily and he panicked, stepped on the gas and screeched away from the chaos into the darkness, shaken and keeping an eye on his rearview mirror till he got home. Why did you run, you idiot? He'd never committed a crime before this and punished himself by imagining years in jail, his career gone, his family gone, his future gone. Why just not go to the police right now? You can afford a lawyer. Then someone tapped on the front door and his world suddenly crumbled away beneath him. They found me. There was nothing he could do but answer it. Running would only make matters worse. His body trembling, he got up, went to the door and opened it. A police officer stood under the porch light. Mr. Halverson, asked the grim officer. He let out a defeated sigh. The policeman said, I am terribly sorry, but I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. Your son's bike was struck by a hit and run driver this evening. He died at the scene. I'm very sorry for your loss. Ah, so you see, he ran over his own son by going through a red light. Oh, how awful. Imagine being in that position. There is almost a moral to that story. Yes, don't run through a red light. That's it. Drive carefully or else you might end up like this i think i said bicyclist and i should have said cyclist what is a bicyclist a bicyclist is the same as i think as a cycle i don't know whether that is actually a word is is that the penny farthing is it a cyclist <laughs> uh, have you ever seen a penny farthing uh, yes i have seen one. that's 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 the bike that has the big front wheel and the very small back wheel now what i want to know is how how the hell do you get on a penny farthing i can see why they stopped being made because i would imagine getting on to a penny farthing must have been very difficult but the way it comes up to here 
it's it's a very big bike i never understood why why the front wheel was so big fortunately they decided to make the front wheel smaller i'm very glad to hear that because you'd need you must you must need or you must have needed a ladder to climb up to get onto a penny farthing it's a very <laughs> random subject to go on to mr duncan I've got it's to say all right it's live english on a sunday afternoon it's live and anything can happen we could just stay like this mr duncan we don't have to get out of this do you, do you really want to stay like this <laughs> until until four o'clock are you sure about that okay let's let's have a vote so yes do you want us to stay like this for the rest of the lesson or would you like us to change so please let us know right now please let us know yes would you like us to change into our normal appearance or would you like us to stay looking like this <laughs> are the votes coming in we need lots of votes we need 10 votes and whichever where, wherever we've got the maximum number we'll, we'll do that the only problem doing this you see is you've got about a 35 second delay so it takes 35 seconds for whatever i say to reach my lovely audience so we've got to we've got to wait for at least a minute oh most people are saying change change I think, I think they're doing that on purpose because they want to see if we can do it i know what you're doing out there you want to yes. see you want to see if we can actually change out of these costumes and then change into our normal normal appearance i know what you're doing lots of people are writing change now just to be awkward oh you stay so? stay can, can everybody please say stay the way you are this is a democracy yes so we must obey whatever the vote says i'm taking control of this vote so i've decided that i will manipulate this vote are you and a I'm, dictator mr duncan i'm going to say i'm going to say no oh, lots of people now saying don't change right so can we have yes change change don't change don't change yes it would appear that most people want to see us stay like this for the rest of the lesson <laughs> joseph fix says you're ugly that's not very nice is it it's not very nice we know we're ugly <laughs> germano says stay the way you are uh don't change stay the way you are says idico oh i miss your normal faces <laughs> are you sure about that <laughs> but you've got all that recorded material you can look at mr duncan uh, Let, in all his all his beauty on any of his past lessons let's have a no look another look let's have another look at the mystery idioms whilst we have a moment to see how the votes are going it yes. would appear that most people want us to stay the way we are oh i see is that true or you were just saying that mr duncan oh no i i'm being honest so many people are saying stay the way you are it would appear that more people want us to stay the way we are so well, what's the ratio out of 10 how many what's the percentage <laughs> I, I must say this particular vote is not very accurate well it's when we come back we'll we'll add them all up and then we'll work it out and i'll do it as an impartial impartial uh, observer but we're doing it now we we can't come back later because because we won't be here we won't be on later we'll be gone it would appear that most people are saying stay the way you are don't change so yes it looks as if we can stay the way we are so we we, we will stay like this <laughs> that's a relief because i don't think i could have got this off in five minutes we will stay like this for the rest of the lesson i we are here on a sunday just in case you've joined us we are now celebrate oh my goodness that look looks that. even worse i'm going to do that so I'm it looks different but i haven't got the hood on so i look a bit friendlier i'm not sure if <laughs> i'm not sure if that looks any friendlier 
I'll be honest, it that looks even more scary. Does it? It does. Oh dear me. Mr. I Mr. Steve's eyebrows are look like scars. <laughs> no, th those are Mr. Steve's normal eyebrows. So, so, so that part of Mr. Steve is normal. That's how he normally looks. So here we go. We are now celebrating 11 years on YouTube. Can you believe that on Tuesday it will be 11 years since we started doing this? I, I really, really can't believe it. So on the 31st of October 2006, all of this began. Can you see me now? Hmm. So we're here. It's not look okay. It's okay look. It's okay. Welcome to Mr. Duncan's first ever edited video. Isn't it exciting? Well, it's been another busy week, and of course, as usual, I've been in the school teaching English. That's my job. I think one of the most common questions I'm asked during my time here in China by my students is how can I improve my English? There's one thing I've noticed, my fingers have gone dead. Look, my fingers have gone a strange reddy, blue, purpley, pink colour. Not very good. I think, I think if I stay outside much longer, I think they will fall off. Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Welcome to the very first episode of my series of English teaching videos. You know, the world of English is a fun and exciting place to be. I'm so glad you could join us for another lesson. Why do we need phonetics? The reason why we need a phonetic code is because some English letters have more than one sound. And because some letters, when joined together in a word, actually create a new sound of their own. Also, there is the silent letter that can appear within a word.
So there it was, a brief look back over the 11 years that I've been on YouTube, and I can't believe it. Mr. Steve can't believe it. We were talking about this earlier, weren't we? Well, if you say it enough, I think we will eventually believe it. So with the fact that you've mentioned it lots of times, I think we can now believe wholeheartedly that you have been on YouTube for 11 years. On Tuesday, it will be exactly 11 years. Don't forget that I did create mm. this YouTube channel whilst I was still in China. So I was living in China, working in China, and I created the YouTube channel whilst I was still there. So some of my early videos were actually filmed in China. And then after coming back to the UK, I continued making my English lessons. And now I've been doing it for almost 11 years. So we are about to enter the 12th year on YouTube. So 11 years on Tuesday and lots of people saying, oh, we love to see the old clips. <laughs> How long have you been watching? How long have you been watching my English lessons? Oh. And what is your favourite lesson? Let's put that question out there right now. How long have you been watching my English lessons? And for how many years have you been viewing? So there is something for you. Nikolai, Nikolai says 11 years. Does that mean you've been watching me for 11 years? If you have, that's amazing. Jamelia says, what a big achievement, Mr. Duncan. Congratulations. Yes, I think so. Luciano says, really awesome. It's not easy to make videos and it takes courage to put the face in front of the camera and film or shoot. It's true. I must admit, doing the live stream is very very nerve-wracking it can be very stressful doing this especially when you're doing it live don't forget what you're what you're watching now isn't recorded it's all live so there's mr steve live just to prove it what time is it at the moment it is 25 minutes past three o'clock on a sunday afternoon here in the UK and of course I put so much effort so much work I can't begin to tell you how much time I take to create the lessons and also create the live streams as well many many thousands and thousands and thousands of hours and you know what Mr Steve people think that I'm some sort of millionaire well I can assure uh, the viewers out there that Mr. Duncan is, is by no means a millionaire. In fact, I think you make just about enough money every month just to buy food for yourself. That's I think it. that's about how much. Uh, this is not a money making adventure. I, I don't do this for money. I must admit, I don't do this to make tons and tons of money. Not like other YouTube people. Mr. other Duncan. youtube people but but i i do this because i love doing it and i love helping you with your english but of course it takes so much time to do this to make the lessons to edit to do the live streams many many days in fact i spend most of my time now preparing all of these lessons and also the live lessons as well and don't forget i give everything away for free everything you see including this is free mr duncan i'm feeling very sorry for you right now you're 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 pleading your case you've only just about got enough money to to, to, to put food on your table Do you know i've just re reached into my pocket and i have found 10 pounds this is a brand new we've got new 10 pound notes now in the uk you can't you can't uh, destroy them they're made of plastic what why would you want to why would you want to destroy a 10 pound note i well, don't know i don't know but this could go through the washing i'm going to give you 10 pounds mr duncan <laughs> towards your youtube channel what do you think of that okay mr steve is offering you are offering 10 pounds that's very kind there are lots of ways i'm going to come right over to you mr duncan there we go and i'm going to put 10 pounds <laughs> there like that <laughs> there I, I feel like a, i feel like a go-go dancer in a strip club buy yourself something nice do i have to do something for this 10 pounds <laughs> 
Yes, you have to teach English on YouTube for another 11 years. Is That's this... what you have to do, Mr. Duncan. OK, then. So, yes, there are ways of <laughs> donating, of course, just like Mr. Steve has just donated. You can also put something forward on the super chat. There is the symbol just in case and of course now you can also make a direct donation if you wish to help this work continue for its 12th year you can make a small donation through paypal as well directly through paypal because a lot of people don't like giving their credit card details so you can use paypal direct and the address will appear underneath this video right underneath so if like mr steve you would like to give me a helping hand to allow my lessons to continue you are more than welcome to do so you can use patreon you can also use the super chat today and if you want to use paypal you can pay directly through paypal without giving all of your details so there you go thank you mr steve that's very kind of you i will put that somewhere safe thank you very much and of course i have lots of lovely people on my patreon site as well lots of beautiful human beings on the planet who send a small donation every single month so thank you very much for that and thank you very much mr steve i am very very touched by your your generous gesture well we'd all like to see you carry on teaching english you've been doing it for 11 years i don't think there's anyone else there can't be anybody else on youtube that is that has done that it's quite an achievement i don't think people quite understand or appreciate that if you look at people on youtube now there are lots of english teachers there but most of them have only been around for a very short period of time mr duncan has devoted 11 years of his life yes. to it so I, you you know i i i've been i've seen him do it and uh, that's why i wanted to give you a bit of pocket money ah uh, you could use that to uh, to put that towards what it costs you for all this makeup that you've spent on the Halloween and all, all this time that you spent Mr Duncan it's very impressive well this is nothing this is just part of it every week I spend hours and hours and hours preparing things writing things filming things uh, designing the set so everything you see every single thing that you see in my videos was created by me no he one does else it. he does it all himself it's they, true do you know you had a conversation somebody from youtube phoned you up didn't they i think it was about six months ago and they asked you about your the the, the, the other the team that you had helping yes. you with your channel yes. and it's it's there's no team it's it's all you <laughs> everything is done by me that no one else is here not like other youtube people who have lots of people behind the scenes helping them everything you see here was created by me including the studio including the videos everything we also have we have a live donation that's just come through from what? big new zuma who has sent five pounds so thank you very much zip new fantastic zuma who has sent five pounds on the super chat thank you very much and of wow. course if you wish to donate through paypal as well you can do it directly and the address is very simple in fact if you want to talk for a moment mr steve i will actually put the address now on the live chat shall, so I, shall i do another scary story do another scary story mr steve go on all oh, right scare us I've got all one more left this is called the ghost i don't want to sound mean but the dead are pretty clueless i've always seen them when I was younger, everyone thought I was just talking to imaginary friends. After a couple of years, when I overheard my parents talk about calling a psychologist, I realised what I was talking to. See, ghosts don't tend to realise they're dead. And they don't tend to look like they do in the movies. They just look like us. I'm pretty smart for a 13-year-old, so I started noticing certain patterns to tell them apart from the living. They could be a big bit distant from living people, or you'd see them try and talk to people who wouldn't even notice them. Some of them could tell that I was different. 
that I noticed them. Like this guy I saw after school yesterday. I'm a big boy now, see, and I don't tend need my parents to pick me up or take me back home. It's just a short walk away. He was standing away from the other parents, didn't talk to them, just stared at me. And that's how I knew he was one of the ghosts. I went over, told him I knew what he was and asked how I could help him. I don't remember much after that. I, I think because of what happened this morning. Downstairs, my parents were crying. I tried to talk to them, but they just ignored me. They must have died last night somehow. Somehow the new ghosts wouldn't talk to me. Some police officers and reporters just arrived and wouldn't talk to me either, just like my parents. It's weird. I've never been or seen so many ghosts together before. Why won't anyone talk to me? Well, the reason nobody was talking to him was because he was dead. How about that for a scary story, Mr. Duncan? Oh, my goodness. That was very scary, I must admit. So the moral there, what, what happened in that? Can you explain it? Well, he could see ghosts uh, in the beginning, but then he died and didn't realise he turned into a ghost. You know what that reminds me That's of? Quite that, scary. that reminds me of that famous movie, The Sixth Sense. Ah. With Bruce Willis and the other guy. They're the guy that looks like a pumpkin. What's his name? I don't know. I can't remember his name now, but it's the kid. But he, but now, when he was young, he looked quite... A lot of people said he looked very cute. But now, apparently, he, he looks like a pumpkin head. I don't, I don't think that's true. That's very mean. What a mean thing to say. I can't sure. remember his name. There's Bruce Willis... But what, what was the what was the boy's name? I can't remember. I'm very bad with names, so it's no good asking me. Thank you very much once again to Big New Zumda or, or Zumda, who has sent a donation on the live chat. Thank you very much for that. And also I have put the address of the paypal me as well you can paypal as well if you wish to make a small donation don't forget everything i do is free for 11 years everything has been given away for free and i promise i will be here for another 11 years i hope so anyway i hope promise. so i really hope so <laughs> tan guy blazy says teacher please help me what is what does it mean to take up and how to learn all the phrasal verbs there are there are hundreds and hundreds of phrasal verbs if you take up something it means you start doing it normally as a hobby or something you do in your pastime so if you have something that you've started doing regularly you take it up you might take up bird watching or take up cycling so you can take something up. It means you start doing it on a regular basis. Luciano says it's Haley Joel Osmond. That's it. That's the guy. That's the that's the little kid from The Sixth Sense. Mm. And of course, we all know what the boy said in the movie. What does he say, Mr. Steve? Do you remember? Uh, I don't think I've ever seen The Sixth Sense. You haven't seen it. He no. says he says to his mother. Oh, right. He yeah. says to his mother. I see dead people oh. and his mother says when when do you see them and he says all the time <laughs> that, that is scary and there is a great twist at the end of the sixth sense so I don't want to spoil it even though I have a feeling that I already have so there is a great twist at the end of the sixth mm. sense thank you very much for your ghost story mr. Steve we are talking about spooky, scary things. Also, we are talking about anniversaries. We are now going to take a look at a lesson all about anniversaries. So here it comes. As soon as I find it. Take it away, Mr. Duncan. This is a lesson that explains how we celebrate anniversaries and why we celebrate them. What am I now that I was then? May memory restore again and again. 
the smallest colour of the smallest day. Time is the school in which we learn. Time is the fire in which we burn. Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In this lesson, we are going to take a look at something we often share with others. A time when we remember. A period when we think about a particular moment from the past. In this special anniversary lesson, we are going to take a look at... Anniversaries. An anniversary is a period of time that occurs at the same moment as something from the past. This can relate to almost anything, such as a notable event or any significant occurrence. We tend to celebrate anniversaries, but as we will be finding out later, this is not always the case. We often see an anniversary as a general point of interest. The more it relates to us, then the more significant it becomes. The most common anniversaries are personal ones. Your birthday is usually the most important, as it symbolises both your arrival into the world and your ongoing progression through life. For the very young, a birthday is a time of excitement, although its significance is usually felt more by the parents rather than the child. In certain religions, a child's birthday can signify the coming of age or an arrival into adulthood. The anniversary of a special moment can involve many different things. The anniversary of a married couple's wedding is seen as significant in most cultures. Cards and gifts are usually exchanged on this day. In Western culture, precious stones and metals are used to symbolise the most significant ones. For example, in the UK we use pearl for the 30th, ruby for the 40th, gold for the 50th and diamond for the 60th wedding anniversary and platinum for the 70th. These are usually seen as symbolic and are rarely given as actual gifts. Of course, not all anniversaries are happy ones. For a happy event, we usually celebrate it. The birth of a baby, the marriage of a couple, an event with positive consequences. When we mark the time when something sad occurred, we commemorate it, we observe it, we pay tribute, we remember it. The most personal and upsetting anniversary must be that of the death of a loved one the passing of a relative or close friend, or a person who left a positive mark on your life, or any tragic event. 
on the anniversary of someone's death, you remember them, you mourn them, you treasure the moments you shared with them, you think about the effect they had on your life, you miss them. The word anniversary is the noun that defines the moment when a past event and the present meet. A point of time from the past converges with the present, albeit symbolically. It is our own perception of the past that creates this feeling. The more you connect with the event, the more you feel its significance. The date when a member of your family died will always be more important than when someone outside your family circle passes away. It is your emotional connection that creates the importance and, of course, the memories you have of that person. This can apply to happy events and sad ones. We tend to make a record of an anniversary. Some people put a notice in the local newspaper announcing anniversaries such as the birth of a child or the passing of a loved one. Or they might make a note of it in their personal diary or journal. So, today's lesson is all about anniversaries, which is quite a coincidence as I'm celebrating an anniversary of my own today. I would like to thank you all for the many thousands of kind comments and messages that I have received from you over those years, and the support of so many kind and loyal people. From my days teaching in China, and all the amazing people I met there, to those closer to home here in England, and of course you, my online students, in so many countries, from so many backgrounds, with so many stories to tell and dreams to follow. And with the help of English, you will be able to share and accomplish each and every one of them. I hope so. Oh, there it was, a lesson made way back in 2011 all about anniversaries how we celebrate certain anniversaries and why why we celebrate certain anniversaries as well thank you very much to francesco francesco has just made a donation through paypal thank you very much i do appreciate it don't forget everything i do is free it has been free for the past 11 years and it will be free for the next 11 years as well so everything you see here is free and will remain free but if you wish to make a donation to allow this work to continue because i do spend so much time doing this i can't begin to tell you how much time i spend isn't that true mr steve it is yes it is uh yes you spend many hours and days preparing particularly for these live lessons these do these take do take a long time and and editing when you make your uh, uh, your pre-recorded lessons uh the editing takes you an awful long time to to, to make it look special and to integrate the uh, the the, the, uh, the visual with the with the music and make it look like a cohesive lesson so yes you do spend a lot of time yes editing takes a long time to do it it's one of the hardest parts of filmmaking is the editing the filming is very involved to actually shoot a movie or to shoot or to film a video to create the visuals 
but then afterwards you have to edit everything in fact there is one particular lesson that i made that is all about it's about memory and that one took a long time to film and also to edit it took over two weeks to make so can you imagine spending two weeks of your life making one lesson and that's how long it took me to make one of those lessons in fact over the years mr steve we have made lessons in lots of very interesting places haven't we i've helped you on a few occasions mostly you do it all yourself but i've been there uh, on occasion to help you and yes we have been to some pretty some pretty wild places and some <laughs> very exotic places as well in fact we are going to take a very quick look at one of the lessons that I made a few years ago in a very exotic location. Do you remember when we went to Turkey? Yes, I do. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> we went on holiday and the holiday turned into uh, Mr. Duncan filming for 90 percent of the time, which he often does. When I'm whenever I'm with Mr. Duncan, oh, let's go visiting somewhere or go out for the day somewhere. He usually spends most of it filming that's true well during that <laughs> holiday you were relaxing and taking it easy and i was out all the time i, I kept disappearing didn't i he can't resist <laughs> filming and it occasionally causes a bit of friction between us because say for example we're just going for a walk somewhere well mr duncan will keep wanting to stop every hundred yards because he sees something he wants to film that he can use in a lesson to teach english and so i get quite irritated at times yes and, so, uh, sometimes we have we have a slight disagreement let's just say an argument a <laughs> disagreement words harsh <laughs> words will pass between us come on mr duncan i want to go for a walk yes uh, stop filming but you're, you're leaving out all of the swear words there of course <laughs> we don't want to cut you off in okay. just before your 11th year okay then let's have a look at this because we are running out of time we've only got 12 minutes left 12 can you minutes? believe it and, and, and we have we have the special celebration to come at the end of the lesson as well so special here we go yes hang on for that we're going all the way to turkey now with one of our lessons one of my english lessons that i made a few years ago and this is a lesson filmed in turkey Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Here I am on my summer holiday, taking in the sights and sounds of Turkey. In today's lesson, we will take a look at words and sentences connected with and relating to going on holiday. Welcome to Turkey. the place you travel to is your destination. You set off from your home and travel to another place. You make a journey. You go on a trip. You take a vacation. You go on holiday. The average holiday lasts for about two weeks. This is more common if the journey taken to get there is a long one. The slowest form of long distance travel is by sea. The fastest form of transport is, of course, the aeroplane. These days, it is common for those going on holiday to fly, even if they are travelling within their own country. City hopping by plane is normal across both Europe and the United States. A short flight is referred to as short haul, while a long flight is often referred to as 
long haul. A plane trip can take anything from a couple of hours with no stops to a couple of days with many stops. Some people find flying less enjoyable these days. The long delays at airports and the many security checks that passengers now face have combined to make travelling by plane much less of an adventure than it used to be. Oh, all of the memories are flooding back now. I remember filming that particular lesson many years ago, way back in 2010. Can you believe it? So seven years ago, I made that lesson. I can't believe it. So do you, do you remember, Mr. Steve, when we were filming in Turkey or when I was because you, you were spending most of your time lying around? But also, are, are there any other moments that you remember? <laughs> Uh, there was one when uh, we where were we in Madeira that's it it was Madeira and we were filming we decided to go on this cable car yes. so the cable car was, was going the cable car is a little carriage that goes up on, on a wire very high up popular in ski resorts but they had this in Madeira for getting because they're very high mountains in Madeira and uh, to, so to get from the the lower sort of slopes near the beach area right to the top of the mountains they had this cable car probably a thousand feet in the air and uh, mr duncan decided he wanted to do some filming from inside this little cable car and it got very scary because the cable car sort of stopped uh, like you see in the films and uh, sometimes on these there's always action adventure films surrounding perilous escapes from cable car yes uh, and we were filming from there and uh, it started to shake and move around and mr duncan was screaming his well, head off you're, you're missing the best part out what was that the best part was i, I got into it and then realized that i hate heights as you know i, I hate heights i yes. get ver i get something called vertigo so vertigo is is the physical feeling of being afraid of heights, but also it, it can make you feel very unwell at the same time. So I, I, I thought it was such a good idea to film inside this particular cable car. <laughs> but as soon as I got in, I realized that now we are about 2000, maybe a thousand feet up in the air in this little box. And I started mm. screaming. I was really, really getting quite frightened. And then the bloody thing stopped. It stopped. So we thought it was like a, a James Bond movie when we were going to have to climb out 
uh, and get on the top of it and, and slide down the, the, the cable or something like that and you were filming all this and it, it is somewhere perhaps you'll have to get, make this available find out on your archives where this That's material it. is and show it to people that, that is hidden away from view oh. no one will ever ever get to see that that was Trust a bit me. scary so that's really in the theme of halloween things being scary heights we only have five minutes left. five minutes and five, we have to celebrate five minutes has left uh, today's live stream has gone very quickly what do you think How, do you think it's gone quickly today well, everyone i oh well i think it's gone quickly i've never done two hour stint with you i've only done an hour before and i'm pretty exhausted i must i must say so we are going to do something very special in a moment very special don't go away but let's take another look at why we are doing this why we are getting so excited about my anniversary it's because i've been here on youtube for almost 11 years on tuesday it will be my 11th anniversary i've got something here this is the first ever video lesson that i made outside because if you are a regular viewer you will know that i love going outside to film to make my video lessons here it is the first ever outdoor lesson that i made over 10 years ago hi everybody this is mr duncan in england how are you? Today I would like to read a story to you. It's called One Good Turn. Two young men were walking along a narrow street. Each one in turn came across an old man lying in the gutter. He was wearing tattered clothes and appeared cold and hungry. The first man passed by the elderly gentleman without stopping. However, the second man stopped and looked at the old man with a sympathetic gaze. He reached into his coat pocket and took out some loose change that he had in there. Here, said the young man, take this and buy yourself some hot food. Thank you very much, said the old man in a weak voice. Don't mention it, replied the young man. The young man continued to walk along the street until he came to the corner. He stopped and turned round. To his amazement, the old man had disappeared as if he'd vanished into thin air. Later that evening, the young man was sitting at home watching the television. He was watching a program about people who do good turns for others. To his amazement, he saw the old man whom he'd met earlier in the day. It turned out that the old man was in fact an actor, dressed to appear as a homeless person. He was even more shocked to see himself giving the money to the old man. It turned out that the TV station had recorded everything that had happened. A moment later, the telephone rang. The young man hesitated for a moment and then answered. It was his mother. I just saw you on television, she screamed. I'm so proud of what you did today. The young man listened to his mother's words of praise and smiled to himself. This is Mr. Duncan in England saying bye for now. Well, we are coming towards the end of today's live stream. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it has been entertaining and I hope that. Oh, wait there. Something's going on here. What What are you doing, Mr. Steve? Oh, Mr. D Mr. Duncan. <gasps> oh, look. 
Congratulations, 11 years on YouTube. There are 11 candles on there. Blow them out and make a wish and then we'll eat some cake because I'm starving. <laughs> I think this is a very good idea. Also, uh, I'm worried that my Frankenstein head my frankenstein monster head will catch fire so here we go so 11 years on youtube here's to another 11 years in the future so shall make a we, wish shall we blow them out together okay one, one two, two three, three. <laughs> oh what's going to set the fire alarms off <laughs> right you talk i'll cut wow thank you very much and and now everything is smoky so thank you mr steve for helping me today and of course thanks for helping me for the past 11 years steve has always been in charge of the transport so without steve i wouldn't be able to get to all of the wonderful places that <laughs> i have filmed it in and filmed at and around so here we go a little bit of cake piece oh of cake. a piece of cake that's quite a good idiom actually if something is a piece of cake it is very easy to do unlike these shows which are very difficult to do these are very difficult to do uh, you'll never believe how much how much preparation takes place so i think you've told everybody about that more than enough mr duncan <laughs> let's eat the cake and say goodbye to all your wonderful viewers who supported you all these many years don't worry i'm going to give you the answers to the mystery idioms in a moment so we are not going to go without doing that but for now we're going to eat some cake because 11 years on youtube mm. 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 oh those artificial flavorings are delicious mm. it's it's very chewy it's very lemony it's lemon cake because you like lemon cake mm. so that's why i got lemon cake i love lemon cake very much leave that with me okay then <laughs> i'll look after it for you mr duncan mm. while you tell everybody about the mystery idioms i'm going back over there now i hope he switched the sound on before he came over here <laughs> i'm having another piece of cake oh i didn't make this I bought it from a local shop. Oh, I think I've got some wax in my teeth. Oh, Mr. Duncan, are you back at your operation desk? I'm back at my desk now. So let's have a look. Here we go, the mystery idioms before we finish. <laughs> I'll just wait for Steve to Ooh. stop banging around. <laughs> oh my goodness. That cake is delicious. It's very lemony. Moist. Lots of zest. So here we go. Today's mystery idioms. The first one. The answer is push your luck. Push your luck. The meaning to continually do things that are dangerous or risky. A person who always dices with danger or likes to take risks can be said to be pushing their look they push their look and the second one a lot of people got this right well about five people <laughs> that's almost many almost the second mystery idiom cat among the pigeons cat among the pigeons to create conflict or fighting by doing something an action that creates violence or violent disagreement or chaos mentioning something that others will fight over is to put the cat among the pigeons to create chaos or argument amongst other people is to put the cat among the pigeons Thank you, Mr. Steve. Where's Mr. Steve gone? I'm here. Oh, I've he's got a back. Bottle of champagne here as well. We can open that later to celebrate. <laughs> champagne? I didn't champagne. know that. Yes, look at that. Very expensive champagne for later. I'm, I'm stunned. Having another piece of cake. I'm, mm. I'm choking, actually. I'm choking on the lemon cake. It, I swallowed too much of it, and now it's all got stuck in my throat. You're not choking with emotion being on youtube for 11 years that would be a very good way to end our our horrific or our halloween lesson by choking to death 
I think that would be quite good. I, we, we might get quite a few viewers for that. <laughs> we would. We would. Eliana says, I hope you have more mm. than 11 more years. Thank you, Mr. Duncan and Mr. Steve. You are welcome. Please don't talk with your mouth full, says <laughs> Mil Milanka. I'm very sorry about that. I think it was Mr. Steve. Isn't he disgusting? Oh. He really is. <laughs> Talking with delicious. his mouth full. Mm, delicious. Mm. It's time to go. We are just five minutes past the end time so we have slightly overrun today but that's all right you can watch this later hopefully there will be subtitles later so if you are watching this later you can actually find the subtitles a lot of people ask where are the subtitles if you click this little symbol underneath you can actually see the subtitles but not yet if you are watching the live stream you can't but later on hopefully there will be <laughs> it's very confusing explaining that by the way it's very confusing indeed oh my goodness we've just had another donation come through on the oh, super chat that's fantastic thank you very much to eliana eliana benedetti who has sent a very large donation thank you much Thank you very much, Eliana. I am now choking, <laughs> choking on my lemon cake. In fact, it's so delicious. I can't resist having some more. Is there anything you want to add, Mr. Steve? No, I just want to say thank you once again for inviting me onto your, your wonderful English show. Mr. Duncan, I hope I'll be here again next week. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, I think you've got some wonderful viewers out there and some, some very loyal supporters and uh, i think they really appreciate what you do and what you have been doing for the last 11 years which is let's face it it's all about trying to teach people how to speak english and and and, and that's what you do that's what you love doing and it's what you've been doing for 11 years and what you want to continue to do and i'm i'm uh, i'm very pleased that you enjoy it and that you've given so much back to 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 everybody around the world uh about teaching english Thank you very much, Mr. Steve. We will see you next week. Um, next week, of course, is November the 5th. It is Bonfire Night or Guy Fawkes Night. So we might be outside next week letting off some fireworks. I'm not sure yet. As long as we don't let them off <laughs> in the studio, we'll be safe. Because the neighbours have told us that we can't let any fireworks off they've got it, dogs because it might scare all of the animals that live around here so that's a slight problem but i'm sure we will work around it i will see you next week thank you very much mr steve thank you bye bye everyone see you next week and thank you mr duncan oh there he is there he goes just one last look at mr steve look at that i love your makeup that's it give us one more scary Dark. look before you go one more scary look <laughs> <Can't do it. laughs> bye bye um, bye mr steve so there he was mr steve has gone and i will go as well we are running slightly over i will see you next week have a great week and i hope you have a safe week as well thanks for your company today thank you for your live donations also you can make a donation through paypal as well for those who are interested paypal me mr duncan there it is that's the address it's as simple as that if you wish to make a donation you are more than welcome to do so catch you next week of course it will be the 11th anniversary on tuesday and once again we will have a look back at some of the things i have done right here on my youtube channel see you later have a great week and of course to ta for now hello world hello can you see me now Hmm. It's over here. It's not look at it. It's okay though. It's okay. Welcome to Mr. Duncan's first ever edited video. 
Isn't it exciting? Well, it's been another busy week and of course, as usual, I've been in the school teaching English. That's my job. I think one of the most common questions I'm asked during my time here in China by my students is how can I improve my English? There's one thing I've noticed, my fingers have gone dead. Look, my fingers have gone a strange reddy, blue, purpley, pink color. Not very good. I think, I think if I stay outside much longer, I think they will fall off. Hi everybody, this is Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. Welcome to the very first episode of my series of English teaching videos. You know, the world of English is a fun and exciting place to be. I'm so glad you could join us for another lesson. Why do we need phonetics? The reason why we need a phonetic code is because some English letters have more than one sound and because some letters, when joined together in a word, actually create a new sound of their own. Also, there is the silent letter that can appear within a word. 